Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so with these WizKids miniatures, they already come pre-primed, and all I've done to that is I've just added in some sand that I've just gotten from my driveway to the base to give it a little bit more of an effect. Uh, so we're going to fill out that base, but what we want to do here is start off with some cobalt skin, and of course paint in everywhere where we can see the skin, and since this bard is trying to be all nice and beautiful, she's showing a lot of skin, so we want to make sure we get that cobalt skin all over Everywhere you can see, there's quite a lot in some very hard to reach nooks and crannies. So if you need to, switch to a smaller brush to get into all those areas. Then once we have her skin painted up, we're going to come in now with some ivory. And what we're going to be doing is, of course, we want to try and do those eyes nice and early. while We've still got a little bit of patience left in us. And we want to grab a nice fine tip brush and try and pick out those eyes as best we can. Now remember... When we're picking out the eyes it's okay if we accidentally go out of the eye socket area because we can come back and paint that original skin color around to tidy it up and then once we've done that it's time to come in for the tricky part and that's to grab some black and carefully dot in the pupils of those eyes so make sure you've got your finest tip brush or even a nice um, point of a needle just dipped in a little bit of black to help you really pick out those very hard <laughs> to do points of the eyes I still find them very very tricky but I need to get as much practice as I can and so I try to do it as often as I can and it's just a matter of trying to match them up so they don't look cross-eyed and then once we're done with picking out those eyes we can come in for the main color of our miniature now which we're going to use some royal purple to do so and we're going to be using this to be painting all of our nice long flowing clothing so pretty much everywhere we can see the nice flowing fabric we want to be covering in all this nice royal purple she's going to really be a nice standout color on the table as well and she should she's a nice show-off bard so she should be that nice centerpiece and attract everybody's eye to her as she performs her music and then once we've painted up all the nice flowing clothing we're going to come in now with some orange brown and we're going to be using this orange brown to be painting up her loot so we want to give a nice overall uh, paint job of her loot and don't be afraid to try and really get in there and get into those uh, little grooves you can see into the hole of the loot because we want to try and get as much coverage as possible. If you accidentally hit her skin, it's okay. We can still go back with our original skin color and just paint that hand back in. But we really want to get a good coverage into these areas. And it's going to be tricky uh, getting into all those little nooks and crannies. And then once we have that loot all painted up, we're going to come in now with some gray blue. And we're going to be using this grey blue to picking out a little sash that's along her waist. So maybe a little bit hard to see there underneath all that uh, long flowing cloth. But she has a, a nice little sash around her waist. And the blue is going to help bring that up and tie in with our purple theme we've got going on here. And it's going to really help complement those colours. Then once we're painted in the little sash she has, we're going to come in now with some charred brown. And for our charred brown, what we want to do here is we just want to be giving a nice uh, paint job to the scabbard of her weapon she has on her side. I know it may be very tricky to see that she actually has a weapon on her side, since it's all hidden underneath this flowing cloth and dress. Um, but she does have even a little dagger as well, just underneath the loot. So be very, very careful when you're picking those things out. Then once we've picked out those, we're going to come in now with some black grey. I'm going to be using the black grey to be painting in our bards here. Give it a nice uh, dark colour so we can draw a lot more focus into the other colours we have on that. And it's going to help uh, stand it out that little bit more. So being very careful here, especially when you're up around that face. Um, try not to get any of this nice dark colour over all the light colours we've already painted. Then once we have her hair all picked out, we're going to come in now with some greedy gold. And where would a bard be without showing off that they can perform well and have the sense of gravitas around them then showing off with a little bit of gold and jewels and just really making everything about them so we want to paint up all of her uh, sort of bindings and armor pieces she has around her including her uh, headband as well we want to be painting all of that stuff in gold so she can really show her presence when she's in the battlefield 
And then once we've picked her out her gold, jewellery and armour, we're going to come in now with some oak brown. And all we're going to be doing for this is we're just going to be placing it on the sand that I placed on the base here to give it a nice ground texture. So we just want to fill that all in nicely with that oak brown. And you can see there's a lot of uh, divots and nooks and crannies that we want to get in here. So just be aware that it can take a little bit of time getting in this in. But it all depends on what you've chucked on the base. And then once we have that earth on the base painted up, what we're doing now is coming back in with some grey blue. And what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to be placing it on the uh, tips of her little long flowing uh, shawl, I think it's called, or uh, scarf that she has attached to her arms. I just want to be placing it just on the end so we can add a little bit more colour and it'll tie in that, that sash along her waist. And then once we've done that, we're going to come in now with some plate mail metal. And we're just going to be using this on just a couple of pieces on the miniature. And we're going to be using it on the uh, handle of her weapon, as you can see here. They're just sticking out. They're very small and hard to see. But I'm just going to be picking them out with some gun metal to add in another little bit of uh, metal color in there. And we want to, she's got some nice shining metal weaponry. Then once we've picked those out, what we're going to do is come in now with some dragon red. I'm only going to be using this on one piece of the miniature, and that is she has a nice uh, gem embedded in her little uh, circlet she has on her head. So we want to make sure we just pick out that nice gem with the red. It's going to really help create an eye-catching piece to the miniature. And then once we've picked out that gem, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some Agrax Earthshade. And we want to be applying the Agrax Earthshade to her loot, as well as the uh, ground texture we have on the uh, actual base itself so being very careful not to accidentally get any of this agrax earthshade over anywhere we don't want it to so you can see i'm being very careful since all this miniature is very very close together uh, it can be a little bit tricky so if you need to switch to a smaller brush to apply the wash don't be afraid to do that and i want to put a little bit more of a drop uh, into those nice holes in the loot there so i can get a little darker effect going on like it goes down further than it actually does as well and then once that is all completely dry we're going to come in now with some Reichland flesh shade and I'm going to be placing this over all of the skin and all of the gold of the miniature um, the Reichland flesh shade has an awesome effect uh, over golds as well as any sort of uh, skin tone wash it has a really good effect when it applies over gold it helps make them a little bit richer and we also want to be doing this over her uh, skin as well. So giving a nice overall coverage everywhere. Just being careful to avoid it pooling. And then once that wash is completely dry, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some blue tone. And we're going to be applying this to her dress and all of her clothing. Rather than going in with a black wash or a brown wash here, which I'd usually do, a bar doesn't get themselves dirty, so there's no need for any of those dirty colored washes so that's why we're going with the blue here just to help enrich the blue colors that's in the royal blue as well as our uh, light blue that we've applied as well just to help give them that little bit extra punch then when that wash is completely dry what we're going to do now is come in with some known oil and we just want to be applying over to one small piece of the miniature here and that is our uh, nice barred black hair we want to help deepen that color since we didn't quite use a straight black, um, is the reason why we went with a slightly lighter color than a straight black, is so we could come in with a wash and the known oil will act into those recesses and really help pop out that hair a little bit more. And then with that done, we have done all of our base coat, so we can start moving on to highlighting. So coming in with our orange brown again, and all we're going to be doing is placing it onto the edges and all the raised areas of our loot here, as you can see. And we've got a nice sharp edge along the whole side of the loot, so we want to make sure we pick that out because it would naturally be catching in the sunlight, as well as just the end bit here. It's going to really help give that extra punch from a distance. Then once we've done that, we want to come back in with some cobalt skin now, and we want to be applying it to all the high points of her skin. So we want to be hitting areas like the nose and the chin, as well as those nice to find muscles she has on her shoulders we just want to be picking out the tops of those being um, very selective and we're just avoiding the recesses so that nice wash can give it off its nice effect that we want to try to go for so just spending a little bit of time around the model picking out all those nice raised areas 
Then once we've picked out all those raised areas in our skin, we're going to come back in now, of course, with some royal purple. And we want to be applying it to all those nice uh, high points of all the folds and uh, curves into all her nice flowing clothing. So there's actually nice easy spots to pick out on this miniature because you, all we're really aiming for is those nice high points and all the folds and the waves and the clothing. So it's so probably a pretty good miniature to practice highlighting on as well. With a nice fine brush you can really pick out all those raised areas and the folds and the waves. Then once we've done that, we're going to come back in now with some bright gold rather than our, our greedy gold we had before, just a lot brighter gold. And of course we want to be applying it to the highlight, so where the sun would naturally be hitting. So you can see I'm hitting the edges and the parts that are facing the sun the most. And giving it a nice overall coverage, and it's going to really help brighten it up like the sun is coming in and shining on. Uh, to those nice gold areas and then with all that it's just about how you want to base up your miniature so I'm going to be doing her playing her loot in a nice uh, meadow slash garden fields uh, playing her songs With all that complete, we have finally finished painting up our female human elf bard from the Pathfinder Battles WizKids range. And you can see that we've made her a nice elegant sort of musician on the battlefield rather than one of those nitty gritty ones since she has those nice flowing dresses. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. And with all that out of the way, I'd like to thank you once again, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.